streaming. Uh, let's see. Come on, let's get to our page. And hopefully we should be live. I mean, I already be Yeah, uh, no, we'll see when you that. And please go to my page. Yep, I got the email, so we're, we're live. Nice, okay. Uh, and as you're getting set up, I'm just gonna grab a quick drink of water. Right? All right, sounds good. We're, well, okay, yeah, there we go, there I am. Let's go to Facebook. All right, guys, give us a couple minutes while we uh, are setting up, but welcome. We will be uh, starting very, very soon uh, for the recap of the TLTPG Lonely Draft League out the LDL. Uh, give us just a second. We're just tweeting everything or just like messaging everyone that wants to watch the stream out. Uh, let's see. All right, let's do this. Watch us stream. Yeah, I'm gonna grab a drink real quick. Okay. But yeah, like I said, we'll get started very, very shortly. Just bump some tunes for them while they wait. I got relaxing music. Do you want me to turn it up and be get a little bit better music? I can't hear the music just because I can hear. Yeah, your it's audio. it's like it's like I'm playing Anvil Town Pokemon music, so it's like calm Pokemon music. Do you want me to get okay. battle music going? Uh, no, we'll we'll save that for the for the actual reviews. All right. Oh, now I'm playing Signwood City. That's that's just nice. That's just nice. All right. Um, let's see. All right, are we ready? Give me. Well, I gotta send this to one more person. This link to one more person. Uh, can I please paste? All right. Let's uh, open up this. All right, all right, all right. All right. So whenever you're ready. You yeah. Can What's going on, on, everyone? This is Brennan, or also known as Some Brother Two, bringing you guys. Um, our Season 6 recap of our uh, Draft Pokemon League format. Actually, am I... Let's see. Yeah. Okay, I'm going. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and we are here to basically just go over each team, uh, let, going over every, each and every individual pick, talk about team synergy and stuff, and I'm saying we because I am not alone here. Uh, guys, you want to go ahead and say uh, hi? Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Arthur here. Um, gonna be uh, doing some recaps with you and joined by uh, Mark. What up, everybody? Um, let's get rolling on this recap. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay, just 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 as a general overview, uh, guys, how did how do you feel like the the draft went this season as compared to like say last season or previous seasons? Um, I think it was uh, it was a pretty smooth draft. We did it um, with the intent of waiting to what uh, Monday, and we already got done. <laughs> yeah, doing the recap. We got us. done like what ten uh, days ago. <laughs> yeah, I got done like ten days ago. So I think everybody's been uh, really uh, anticipating week one, and uh, teams look really good. What about you, Mark? Yeah, it went smooth. I mean, what's cool is that it gave an opportunity for a little like preseason play if the trainers were open to it. So. That's cool, and then yeah, like uh, like Marty said, you know, we weren't starting till the first, so getting it done and out of the way early was nice. Made the holidays a little easier on everybody, so good draft. All right, awesome. So uh, let's we're just gonna jump straight into it. We're gonna for uh, I believe Arthur is gonna start talking about uh, Dr. Uh, how do you say his name? Dr. Dr. D. Deramus. Deramus. Break it into two syllables. So D, and then there, there's the, the space, and then Deramus. Deramus. Um, Deramus. And then DJ for short. But yeah, he is a he's a rookie. He is the, I guess, de depending on how you classify rookies here, there's two kind of ways that you can do it. Because we've got some people who 
this is their first LDL season without, uh, you know, just being restricted into RU. Uh, but he is the, he's definitely the rookie in all uh, – all senses of the word rookie. So uh, first ever TLTPG league. Uh, everyone's excited for him to get started. Um, he's already announced his week one pick uh, or his week one uh, transaction too. So we can talk a little bit about that. But Ooh, very nice. uh, he's sporting a team of Skarmory, Magnazone, uh, Alola Marowak, Porygon 2, Mudsdale, Malamar, Mega Venusaur, Azumarill, Voivern, Vibombi, and Glory. Um, so I would say the thing that stuck out the most to me was uh, I really like the... Um, I really like the Skarmory, and I really like the uh, Mega Venusaur core. Um, he is, however, going to get rid of Skarmory for Pure and Black for a little bit more offense and speed. Oh! Um, but week one, uh, that is a really cool core, this new Mega Venusaur. Uh, he got some power in Azumarill. I think Azumarill is one of those Pokemon that uh, more often than not you will run huge power, but like we saw last season, you can run the Sap Sticker tech. Um, you can run it bulkier. You can run a Parish Trapping set with you know, Parish Song and uh, what's that move I'm thinking of? Not Waterfall, but um, the move that uh, traps you. Oh man, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Not like that? no, not that's the Z move. But we'll Waterfall, open. Whirlpool, Whirlpool. 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 That's what it is. Parish Song, Whirlpool set. Yeah, I got um, that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got some. Uh, fun, fun he's times. got some good. Uh, he's got some good low tier compete with Noivir and Rabombi. So uh, even though the majority of his team is kind of on the slower end, he does have uh, the speedy Pokemon who can kind of round out his team uh, for the weaker team builds. Uh, so I would say overall, um, pretty good team. Uh, we'll be interested to see what he does. I think Curum Black being added to the team gives him another element that's uh, that's a really strong offensive Pokemon. And, uh, really a nightmare to kind of prep for. So uh, with that being said, yeah, anybody else uh, have any comments here? The only thing I will add is if he, if, once he does pick up Kiram Black, the fact that I believe now Rybombi does get sticky webs now is actually quite wonderful for Kiram Black because it will allow it to outspeed a lot of things that it usually couldn't and it allows for, uh, for him to uh, not scarf uh, Kiram every week or band it, which is usually how most Kirams are done. So I like it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I forgot about the web stick. All right, uh, let's see. Moving on, I think we are heading to Kenneth's team. Uh, Kenneth, yeah, Kenneth's team, who is the coach of the Rock City Tyranitars, and uh, Arthur. I think this is still uh, you, right? Yeah, sure. So feel free to jump in too. But, Absolutely. Um, I uh, I like what he did here. I like uh, Mega Beedrill. That was one of the picks that I was actually eyeing for myself. Um, not so I will get the opportunity to face it twice since he's a divisional uh, rivalry game. Um, I noticed that uh, this is one of the few teams that um, needs to needs to actively prep for bug, which is kind of interesting. So most teams, I think if you look at the team charts, overwhelmingly have a positive matchup with bug. But I think for Kenneth, um, he'll have to build in mind of making sure bug problem are not are a problem, and I don't think that I think that's a good thing because most people don't really have a strong offensive bug type. So I mean, that's something you really have to worry about when you get a week out. Um, I think um, fairy types and um, fairy and ice will be uh, you know, difficult to work around week to week, but he's got Pokemon that can help him with that. You know, Metagross can can go with the Scarf one week. Mega Beedrill is just you know so fast that it can deal with. Uh, those those pesky fairy types. So uh, he's got he's got really good Pokemon. Um, I think uh, he's got some really good speed too. So uh, being able to have Mega Beedrill at that really high speed tier and then round that out with Alakazam and Zapdos, um, I uh, I think uh, it's a really strong team with uh, a lot of really good Pokemon that uh, can be run with different sets, multiple sets. And I think that the team building versatility is really what opens things up. Uh, for having a successful season. So hopefully he can get the most out of this team uh, by building creative sets. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I really like the Identical Trap. It's a really solid team. I'm not, definitely not looking forward to facing it once. All right, and uh, don't stop talking, Arthur, because we are actually going to be transitioning into the Phoenix Sun Flora's team, which is uh, your team. And yes, I'm, so you guys can do review my team. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for your team. Uh, like, like, like we've known each other for quite some time now, and 
Uh, first off, just the fact that you have Landorus on your team is just super, uh, just incredible. It's one of the most overused mons of all time. Got that wonderful Intimidate U-turn capabilities, but can also be run specially if you really want to. He's got that base 101 speed to outspeed a lot of things, which is super nice. And you are you love gimmicks. Last season it was Pukumuku. This season it's all about Toxapex. And with the buffs that we were talking about before we started the stream, Toxapex is just going to be a lot, a lot of fun to use. I love your cores, like the fact that you have, uh, you have, you have, the, you have some potential for like a, like a two still types to work with it, but having the, your Mega around it, Mega Latios, the, one of the hardest hitting Dragon types of all time, coupled with uh, Sylveon, which can be run bulky or you know offensively. It works really well, and if you throw in Cobalion, you know, which does sometimes need uh, some setup, it's going to be, it can, you know, put in a lot of work, say, after one Swords Dance or just some other kind of setup I think it might get, but uh, it's, it's, it's crazy to see what, what you've done in the past with some mons, and uh, a lot of things that I can't wait to see is stuff like with uh, Serena and the Greninja, which uh, it's not going to be Protean, right? It's just Torrent. Yeah, it's just Torrent. But but the thing is, it's like... If, uh, you, but you pair that up with Rotom Wash and... I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Rotom Heat and Serena. I mean, you got you got one solid core, you got your Megalatios, Sylveon, you your Cobalion, you got another good core, and then you just throw in all this extra stuff that's so much fun to use. The one I'm actually excited to see, uh, and I'm actually curious about, is the Vanillux. But yeah, I'm... I um I just really like weather modes. Um, I, pretty much every league that I've ever done well at, and the the last title I won was Excadrill Tyranitar. Um, just having the the threat to the weather mode, you have to prep for it. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it limits what other teams can can build for you, uh, because you just can't account for just the weather mode just kind of running through your team. And ice is such a popular weakness too. Um, so. Uh, something strong like Vanillix that can reset weather, something that's got access to a taunt and a really strong freeze drive is what I was going for, and a Lola Sand Slash just with the Slush Rush, and another Rapid Spinner, um, just a really strong Pokemon in general. So definitely um, tried to, to build around multiple fours and i uh, really happy with the team. Well, what stands out to me, like right away, is if you just look at the first two picks, which is obviously what you were going for, the compliment from Landorus to Toxapex is just through the roof. With yeah. like a psychic, psychic aside, literally every weakness that they have, they cover each other on. And with Landorus getting intimidated on top of everything, that's going to be hard to deal with. You can't just come in and drop earthquakes on Toxapex. So. And and the one thing yeah, that, that we haven't be been talking about as well is uh, some of our Z picks, Z move picks, our Z crystals. Uh, each coach got to draft alongside their Pokemon a, a Z crystal as well. And so you got ground DMZ. Was that a part of the plan? Um, I did you did you say Rocky MZ? Oh, Rocky, my bad, Rocky MZ. Um, I can I can't hear you at nope. the very beginning. It's kind of cutting out. But I, I think you're asking about my Z crystal. Um, I missed out on flying DMZ. So um, really, all I was trying to do with uh, the Z crystal is get something that. Um, didn't have an immunity, so something like flying, dark, um, or rock as just a, or ice even as a, as a Z move, so that even if something switched in and predicted me, I was still getting big damage on. So, uh, Landorus uh, with earthquake rock coverage, so Stone Edge earthquake coverage is, is really good. So that's why I went with Rocky. All right, very nice. Now moving on to Mark's team now and the coach of the Arizona Volcarona. Um, I'm seeing a couple members on your team there, Mark, that I'm very familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> mainly being, I like those members, but... mainly being the uh, Thunderous and the Entei, which I absolutely love. I loved them on my teams while Entei was problematic at times. You know, they work really well together. They both complement each other. Uh, both being huge uh, physical special attackers that just can really break down teams by themselves, and. Uh, you throw that in with uh, the electric community. I mean, it, I think that's why I ended up grabbing an electric community myself this season again, because just having that that safety net as opposed to having a ground type is just really beneficial, right? 
Right, well, I went with Mega Gyarados as the first pick, so mm -hmm. I needed things to cover what would come in and wreck on Mega Gyarados, so Thunderous was an easy pick for Electric Pokemon with the Bolt Absorb, and then uh, Entei can cover Bulky Grass pretty well. So, mm -hmm. everything else, I mean, I picked up Zygarde on a whim just because I think it's a very strong Pokemon, and very has a lot of potential like as a setup sweeper and whatnot and even just as a physically bulky pokemon but um we'll see how it goes um my team's weak to hazard so i scored espion for the magic bounce to try and scare people away from setting hazards on me as well as having hitmontop who it'll be my first experience with but hitmon lee's been doing me dirty in other leagues so i think he's probably the superior Spinner and also Cryagonal, just because, like Marty initially said, uh, noticed a lot of ice weaknesses on teams. And um, having a pure ice obviously opens me up to a lot more weaknesses, but um, decent speed tier. Um, I, I hopefully, that helps exploit some of the other teams' weaknesses. So, I don't know, I'm looking forward to the season and happy with my team where it stands right now, but we'll see. All right, and like another thing, I actually just really like, um, you know, because prior Mega Evolution, you know, your Gyarados is flying type, and of course Thunderous is flying type. You got Entei, uh, but having Magic Bounce on Espeon is something that a lot of people actually do forget. I've forgotten it a couple times when just facing it on Showdown and stuff. And um, Espeon can be pure power. It also gets access to some Fairy type moves, so it can hit things uh, that it can't usually take on, like. And I love it. I absolutely love Espeon. So that's like right. one of my favorite he picks on Steel YouTube. Bell, so he can kind of cleric. Um, well, just the fact that Baton Pass is allowed, I think, makes Espeon that much better. Exactly. Even yeah. like a fast Baton Pass um, is, is really good. And running those Calm Mind stored power sets are really fun, too. Yeah. The one thing is, is that I do not have a lot of physical bulk in and of itself. Um... But then I, I also picked up Smeargle, and that should be fun too, just because of what he's capable of what as well, and hopefully soak up some of my other weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well now moving on, we are going to be talking about Coach Brandon and the, uh, I believe, Las Vegas Reggie Gigas? Yes. And yeah. uh, Brandon has a very cool team in my opinion. I... I personally like how he snipes, uh, pers or somewhat snipes uh, the flying MZ from you, Arthur. Because uh, yeah, it'll uh, hopefully he gets some good use of it. I see uh, Togekiss using that pretty well. With yeah, the, um, and the Super Luck and um, Z Tailwind combo that could be pretty strong. What does Z Tailwind right. boost? Like, d does it boost like a stat as well, or does like it? Uh, it's your crit oh, chance. It, it yeah, so super, super luck boosts your crit one stage, and then Z Tailwind boosts it another two. So oh, after wow. you Z Tailwind, everything's crit. That's crazy. Yeah, all crit. But yeah, I mean, Very uh, nice. The, um, also, just he covers everything. If you look at even the um, the team chart for his team, like as far as like physical like coverage, he has the most defense on his team by far, even. He won that award or whatever. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. I mean, the bulk is here. I mean, it's just, just going down the list, you have Chansey, bulk. You have Tentacruel, especially bulky. You have Gligar, which can be extremely, extremely bulky with uh, the Eviolite. Steelix, one of the most highest defenses in the game. You have Quagsire, known for its defenses, only having the one weakness in grass. And then you have the legendary freaking Mega Sableye, which tanks teams by itself it's it's just nuts yeah he's yeah. got a lot of defense i think um the only thing i would say that he i mean it depends on his play style right um there's a lot of unknowns with some of these newer coaches if he's a uh, if he's a stall type player i think this team's built around what he can do well uh, because it will require that kind of play style uh, it is really slow so he'll have to find ways to get creative with speed so whether that's you know, Como, Dragon Dancing, the Z Tailwind tech with Togekiss. Um, it'll it'll be interesting to see what he does uh, because, uh, or even Scarf Inboard. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how he uh, it, he works in ways to kill threats to break down those uh, that chancy Mega Sableye. 
Right. Well, and he has like Quagsire too, which is a pretty great unaware Pokemon to maybe come in if something gets carried away against his walls. So I don't like you, everybody's saying it's just a, a very defensive team. And if he can use that to his advantage, I can see it being very successful for him. Yeah. And my only like big like like wonder, because I don't know anything about this Pokemon, is Giraffe Rig. Do any of you know anything about what a Giraffe Rig can do? Because I sure don't. Um, I mean, it can call mine, it can hyper voice, um, it's psychic type, so it uh, gets a lot of cool psychic moves, um, and psychic some decent normal, coverage. Huh? Yeah. Alright, well, uh, moving on now, we're going to be talking about the uh, Season 5 Champions team and Coach Matt and the Winnipeg Jellicent, and I love Matt's team. I'm just going to say that right now. I love everything about Matt's team. I don't see one thing I, I dislike, personally. Yeah, I think um, I really like it. It, it. Mammoth Swine is going to have to put the team on its back because his top three, uh, Jirachi, Lucario, Arcanine, are all weak to ground. Um, and Crobat and Arachnid are the things that resist ground. So ground types will be a problem. I think um, Mammoth Swine will be the thing that just really checks those ground types right because you've got the priority ice. So I think... Um, He's got good speed. Uh, he's got uh, he's got a Crobat, which uh, it just is a really good Pokemon. Jirachi, um, half the battle is figuring out what kind of Jirachi he's running. So I, I really like the team as well. Uh, he's I, I'm excited to see what Mega Altaria can do because yeah. I think that was one of the steals of the Tier Two Megas. Absolutely, like like just Mega Altaria just being able to be extremely bulky with like maybe a Cotton Guard set or being able to Dragon Dance on your face and throw off like uh, earthquakes or something of that nature, double edges. I mean, it's it's honestly scary. And what I, I really do like the pair up with uh, the dual steel type with Jirachi and Lucario, just because Lucario did get that huge buff in Meteor Mash uh, with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which I think is the perfect move for him. Uh, just pairing that up with Extreme Speed. I mean, this, like, this Pokemon can have... It can Swords Dance, it can Nasty Plot, and it has priority on both sides as well. And I feel that's like really that would... Yeah, I feel like it's just like that's a good Pokemon. steal for him. But but you're right, I do feel like, like aside from like having the Levitate uh, with Rotom and the Flying type with Crobat, Ground types are going to be really problematic. Uh, but I, that's probably why he just decided to grab the uh, Ground DMZ, just because he knew Maliswine was going to be able to... Uh, uh, probably carry most of the team on his back with that. Yeah, I, I expect Mammoth Swine to lead his team in kills, if I can make a, an early prediction. I like it. Sure, I li especially with uh, a lot of teams being weak to ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mammoth Swine's just, it's, it, ice ground coverage is so good. <laughs> it's, it's so good. <laughs> and it's so, like, it's so hard to prep for, it's just so, it can be so bulky as well. Yeah. It's, yeah it's really and you can run, like, even Band Ice Shard just hurts so hard, even if you want to put a band on them or something. I don't know. Alright, uh, now heading on to the Lakewood Trevenants uh, and Coach Alejandro, another newcomer to the LDL this season. Uh, very fun team, if you ask me. I, there's a lot of fun things that I see here, and like... I don't know. I don't know. Like as far as synergy, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you guys that and ask you guys what you think. But I think that the synergy is good, but I'm not sure why. Um, I, I couldn't hear what you said at the end, but I, I, oh. I the synergy points I see here, I like Latios Nihiligo, I like Latios uh, Klefki. Um, I, just getting. Getting uh, Fairy Dragon Steel into Pokemon is, uh, is is really good. So I like the Latias Blood Key Core. Um, I think with this team, it's it's built around weakening things just to sweep a low bunny late game. Um, so if you look at the things that like you have to break down for low bunny, um, I, I think he's got the tools to, to do that here. Yeah, absolutely. And and the, I, I like the big thing that pops off with my with this team that I see is he's got those wall breakers out of nowhere with Latias, Nihilego, Darmanitan for sure, and then like just a hidden gem just like Alolan Persian to like parting shot out of nowhere as well. I think mm -hmm. is definitely going to be yeah. beneficial. 
Yeah, and he's the fastest team in the league uh, by far. By and usually far. speed will translate to wins. I mean, you saw it with Matt's team last year. He was the fastest team to come a title. Uh, doesn't always, you know, doesn't always mean that you're going to take on the championship. But speed is speed is so crucial when you're doing these uh, draft leagues and you're counter teaming another against another team. He has a lot of immunities too. I mean, the Heliolisk um, that gives him another water immunity, even though you don't see it on the team charts. Yep. He has a way to kind of like come in on anything, so. Yep. I, it's and I, uh, yeah, and I will say that the steal of this draft uh, for him was definitely the Tornadus. Um, I had that in a another league like this. It is a steal at tier three. Uh, it doesn't have the best move pool, but it, it's it's really good. It's a it's a really strong Pokemon. So um, being able to set spikes with Klepki and have something like Defiant Tornadus um, soak up that defog uh, is is a really nice pairing too. Well, even Klefki on its own, whether it be hazards or screens or however he wants to run the prankster on it, I think mm -hmm. Klefki's a scary Pokemon to see. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of Thunderous's other half, where you're going to be moving on to the Victorville Victinis and Coach Antony, who grabbed the other version of uh, Tornadus, and this team just is looks fun like i'm gonna say this again it looks a lot of fun there's a lot of new stuff to be used here in draft format that i've seen mainly the the stack attacker the palace sand and the typhlosion i think are going to be like really fun pokemon to use just because i've never really seen them be used that much like i know with vgc side of things stack attacker ha has its has its fun for sure uh and like i was saying to you guys like that uh attack boosting uh the attack boosting set is a lot of fun, but like I like it. I really do like this team a lot, and the fact that he has a low and nine tails to go through, set up the veil to make second attack it even bulkier, is really really cool. Right. I take note that you know not a lot of people grabbed weather setters, and he has potential in the the Peli God, Kingdra. Swiss Swim, as well as, like you mentioned, the Lowland Ninetales Aurora Veil. So he definitely seems like he's going to want to run Weather. You know, that's going to be up there for him. And yeah, another... I think um, just just the fact that you have to account for two different Weather modes is, uh, I mean, it's just, it's a lot to account for. It really, it really handicaps what you can, or I'm sorry, it handcuffs what you can do team building wise because you have to account for just two really offensive modes um so like the the veil offense or the the, the rain offense um i think that psyche mz is probably going to find its way to necrozma with the prismatic laser tech um it's pretty cool so for those of you who don't know uh, prismatic laser will default to whether uh, necrozma has higher attack or higher special attack um so just uh uh, you know, pretty cool Z move there. He's also got some some options with psychic attacks on the Pokemon. Um, I like Palisand. I think that's a, a steal for Tier Five. I've seen that thing do some some work. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think for him it will be figuring out what's the best six Pokemon combination each week and trying to synergize. Uh, I think he's got a real uh, he's got a lot of really good Pokemon, but trying to figure out how those those work together as a six man team will be. Um, you know, probably something that he's focused on this season. Um, the only the only thing I see that would be kind of hard would be ghost types because he doesn't have a uh, immunity or resistance there. But overall, really strong team. Absolutely true. Uh, now heading into uh, for the man down south, uh, but the Boston Buzzwolves and Coach Jesse. Uh, this team is is very quite interesting because I'm looking at it right now and I'm realizing this man got his hands on three Ultra Beasts. Yeah, he definitely has a uh, pretty scary sweeper mode, whether that's Scarf Buzzwool or Scarf Circuitry or um, Scarf Blacephalon. I think um, all three of those can, can sweep your team if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. And he definitely has the bulk to back up uh, some of these Pokemon, because stuff like, uh, like say, the Frogadier or even the Buzzwool, they, sometimes they can be uh, frail on certain respective sides. You know, the Buzzwool, of course, with the, uh, with the special side of things or... Uh, even Excadrill's uh, four times uh, four times weakness, 
Uh, there's there's bulk to back it up with the Mega Slowbro, the Reg Ice, the Mill Tank. I mean, those three alone could just really bounce back back and forth with each other to eat any hit that anyone needs to uh, doesn't want to take. If you got fighting types, well then yeah. Slowbro's there. If you got a fire type, well guess what? You got a thick fat Mill Tank and uh, Mega Slowbro. <laughs> it's just honestly, oh. it's just honestly crazy how how everything really balances there with just those those three mods and uh Golbat is interesting uh especially because he does have Fro uh frogadier which i believe can use protean yes yeah so like like a lot of like the thing is with frogadier it's like you like everyone's like well it's a it's a middle stage evolution uh so you're just gonna probably do Eviolite with it every week. No, you either you scarf it you you spec it band it life orbit you put this thing to work because it's not going to stay on the field, no matter if, even if you put an Eviolite on it. But having that fun Protean approach is going to be a lot of fun. And I know, like, like pairing that up with stuff like, uh, like Spike setup or something like that, or I don't know. It, it just, it just, it just seems fun to have a Protean on. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good team. I think, um, you know, like, like a lot of the teams, he will probably have to scarf. Um, one or two Pokemon each mm -hmm. week just because of his speed tiers. Uh, but I mean, he's a he's a good battler. He knows what he's doing. Um, I would think that the uh, you know just I mean, Scarf Buzzwool, Scarf Excadrill. He a lot of his Pokemon operate as good Scarf Pokemon. So as well as um, setup as well. I'm realizing you got you have the Curse with uh, Miltank, Greg Ice. You have Dragon Dance with uh, uh, Tyrantrum. Yep. Uh, All I, these Pokemon have set up moves, and that's really his forte. So mm -hmm. he uh, right, definitely drafted a dream around what he could do. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> All right, now moving. Um, oh. He just picks his Excadrill, though, on this document. <laughs> look at the doc real quick. Yeah, and I look see at it. the team chart. <laughs> Excadrill is the biggest pimp in the world. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now moving on, we're going to be talking about our good friend, the Blazing Squid, and the coach of the Toronto Totodiles. And I, looking at his team right now, uh, Squid's team is just scary. He has speed tiers all over the place. He has very strong mons and a few hidden gems that he was definitely able to snag out of nowhere. Uh, just kind of going down the list, he has a he has a very cool. Uh, Dragon Steel Fairy Core with not only uh, Primarina but with Diancie as well. Having Garchomp at base, what 102 speed, is really really nice. Being and Dragon Dance, Swords Dance, you know all that scary. Having the bulk as well uh, with Ferrothorn and Primarina is really nice. He's got a Gutsmon with Heracross, a Protein User with Kecleon, um, Mew that can do anything and everything you want it to. Electros, which has basically no immunities with Levitate, and Mega Absol is just scary. Mega Absol is scary. The one thing I notice as well, aside from the Mega Absol, he's not hitting very high speed tiers either, mm -hmm. which seems to be pretty consistent with this draft. So, you know, the teams actually stack up against each other fairly well. It'll just be interesting to see, like, who scarves who that week, you know, to try and get that upper hand. Mm -hmm. I will say this, though. Like, just look out for his Moltres, because I know Squid's been watching A-Drive in the MPA, and he is loving himself some Z uh, Sunny Day tech, or, like, Z Fire Blast or whatever. Or Z just watch out for it. A lot of Pokemon learn Sunny Day out of nowhere. It's very strange, so just watch out for it. That is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I've I think, been watching I think, that as well. Oh. Yeah, and I think Mark's dead on. If you look at the um, the average speeds for every team, he is the second slowest team, or he's the yeah second slowest. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I, I think he he had a pretty slow team in the RU. Think about it too with the Vikable, the Aromatis, and uh, the Dragalge. He had a pretty slow team there and still managed to win. So I think uh, for a lot of these people, you, you can definitely see that they drafted around. Their play styles and um, yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how he does with this team. It's got a lot of uh, cool stuff on it. All right, now moving on to my team in the Salt Lake City Swamperts, 
Okay, yeah, um, good speed, uh, one of the faster teams. I believe it was the second fastest, if I look at my notes, yeah, second fastest team. Um, so definitely got some good speed there. I think um, Infernape is a really good pick for tier two. Uh, I think it could be, you could have thrown it in tier one and people still would have drafted it. I, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a strong Pokemon. Um, I think uh, for your team, uh, I think uh, Slowbro is going to be uh, really clutch, um, just having a defensive backbone. Because I know, um, yeah, I just it, 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 Mega Aggron and Slowbro look like the defensive force of the team, and they're both really strong Pokemon. So, um, yeah, what were you? I guess it, it might be best to actually kick it back to you and kind of figure out what you were trying to do draft-wise with this team, like what were you well, trying to I'm, build them? I want to mention though, I really like the Roserade tech for... Yeah, um, Roserade's a really good uh, one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I had them last season in RU and I got to experience just how great technician, um, being able any week to like look at the team you're up against and be like, all right, what's my best, um, like, you know, hidden power attack that will just hurt this team and Roserade gets that plus the technician damage plus a great special attack stat so um that's cool Jolteon we eat like quick feet if you want to run it that way one week or if you want the bolt absorb or whatever but even the base 130 speed with where this draft went is just a huge threat you don't have to worry about the scarf or anything like that so and then I'm really interested to see how you run Scyther because um, as a pure bug Pokemon, it like stood out to me and whatnot. So um, I think that's cool. And you know, base 105 speed still relatively high. Um, I don't know. I like your team and also Florges, dude. Florges is a pimp, like one yeah, of the Florges best. Is really good. Like the best clerics in the entire game, you know. So. Or, you know, doesn't even have to be a cleric. It's not, like, put in a corner or anything like that. But, you know, uh, I, I see that as a huge threat on your team. And how are you going to deal with it, you know? Right.
named the Russellville Rockets. That's what he named it, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Russellville Rockets. So, looking at this team, Mega Gardevoir alone, scary. <laughs> Wait, I think you, um, your audio may have uh, oh. died. Oh, no. I can hear him. Okay. Yeah, someone someone in the chat said that they couldn't hear Brent anymore. Um, oh. not sure not sure if you can hear us. Uh, see if um, if it works. But yeah, Steven Steven's got a really good team. I like um, I like the Heatran Rotom Wash uh, Bioplume Core. Uh, Bioplume actually got sap uh, strength sap strength this generation. Sister, yeah, strength. yeah. So uh, what it's, does that uh, do? It's a really actually, good move. Um, pretty cool. Uh, just uh, being able to spam sleep batter. I think Bioplume will be one of those that we talk about. What are the steals of the draft? And those steals are going to be tier three, tier four, tier five. Uh, Sil Valley, a uh, really good pick. It can be whatever it needs to be every single week. Uh, and the normal type uh, is, is just really strong without having to put a, uh, um, one of those plates on it. Um, I think Doug Trio was really key because. In order to sweep, Mega Gardevoir has got to get rid of Fire, Steel, and Poison types, right? And Dugtrio traps all of them and does significant damage very quick. So I really like the uh, Mega Gardevoir Dugtrio pairing as ways to just break down his team and set up Mega Gardevoir for a sweep play game. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that uh, Prez likes lower tier stuff and he because he knows how to use them extremely, extremely well. And I feel just like with a lot of this stuff, it like it seems so strange to me to just see them on screen. But knowing Prez and knowing how he, how his tech and how his uh, pre pre game thinking works, it's gonna work for him for sure. Any yeah, and oh just, yeah, it's a very well rounded team. A lot of setup potential too. You know, Cloyster likes to uh, shell smash and if you let that get carried away on you with uh, you know hitting five times with uh, certain moves and whatnot that could be very scary and then yeah like everybody else is mentioning clear the threats get mega gardevoir up in there it's a scary team mm -hmm. you definitely have to you don't, and you don't even know what to expect, especially because he does have the Silvoli. So that's how, you know, having a wild card like that always throws a monkey wrench in the process of building for the team. So Lord knows and I'm going to be nobody wants to get arena trap. <laughs> Lord knows I'm going to be hopping on Serebi and looking at every single color pattern of Savali so I memorize it. <laughs> uh, dude, that's such a good idea. I usually base it, like, whenever it comes out, however many Pokemon I have, I just start looking at my moves and, like, what's effective and not effective and whatnot, mm -hmm. but that's, that's smart. You, you could figure it out like that. Hey, if I'm, if I'm gonna have 60 seconds with, with every turn, you damn, you're damn well, I'm gonna use them. <laughs> well, yeah. Alright, well, there you go, you guys. Those are our 12 teams that are going to be taking part in LDL Season 6. Uh, I've posted it once before, but I'll post it a couple more times just so it can get out there. We do have a uh, a document a doc for you guys to check out to keep up with the teams and stuff like that. And every single battle, uh, except for I think a few of us, a few of us that do have YouTube channels, all the battles will be going on the TLTPG YouTube page. So definitely make sure you guys head over there because you don't want to miss these battles. These battles are a lot of fun. They are going to be lit. They are going to be hype. And I can't wait for season to start. New Year's can't come quick enough, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Yeah, I'm really excited for the season to start. We start Monday, so I'm um, looking forward to that. No, and even preseason games I'm looking forward to as well. So. Mm-hmm. But with that, you guys, we are going to get up out of here. We, I want to thank you all personally for watching. I'm sure everyone else thanks you as well. And like we said, go check out the TLTPG. Oh, nope. Just the, yeah, our TLTPG YouTube page. It's going to be awesome. A lot of fun stuff is coming. But thank you guys so much, and we will see you guys next time.